don't know if you'll be able to hear this, we are at the Arizona Science Center today for our homeschool field trip. It's very, 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 very busy. There's like busloads and busloads of kids. So hopefully it doesn't get too overwhelming. But we are happy you are watching us today and we're going to take you along with us. Are you excited? Yeah. All right, we're going to have fun. So when we went to the planetarium, as you saw in the last clip, Samara was sitting there. She had her ears covered, which wasn't because of noise. It's just what she does when she's coping. And all of her coping mechanisms were on that day because it was very, very busy there. So it was very, very noisy um, outside the planetarium. The planetarium, once we were in there, it was actually quite quiet. <laughs> and. Uh, throughout the day though she had all of her coping mechanisms on you saw her you know she has her ears covered um, you didn't see it on video but she was doing the circles around me when we would stop like she did at the uh, field spring day for homeschool and she was doing okay though she was coping and she was having fun I asked her a couple times if she wanted to go home and she said no she was she was having a good time and she was just using her her coping mechanisms to deal with the extra busyness and the extra sound. Now the planetarium was something we hadn't done before. It was something that we had wanted to do for a long time because Samara has known her planets for a long, long time. She really likes uh, space. She loves Star Wars. Um, she loves anything having to do with um, outer space and planets and things like that. So I had wanted to take her for a long time and I was unsure if I could because of her vocal stems. Now typically when you go to any kind of theater, movie theater, you know, you kind of want to try and be quiet. And I have taken her to sensory movie days and things like that and she's done okay and I've taken her to the, to the drive-in and um, but I've not, but the planetarium I didn't know a lot about. And I thought when we booked this homeschool group thing that would probably be on a day that wasn't so busy and I'm not really sure why I thought that other than that most of the homeschoolers that I've met don't like to go when it's really busy. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. So there was like 24 bus loads of kids and it was super busy and the planetarium was packed. It was full and she was doing okay though. The, the screen was a nice uh, molten red color. And then it changed. And when the color of the, it changed, I don't know why it changed. I don't know if it's just an automatic thing or if the presenter did it, but it got her attention because it changes the lighting force in the whole room. And she got out of 
her seat and I, I purposely sat um, at the end of an aisle and because I know that she oftentimes can't sit still very long so I wanted her to be able to get to an aisle where she could stand or if she needed to do some slight uh, jumping, not crazy jumping, but um, she needed to be a little moving, you know, she could do it without disturbing anybody. And it was also near the doors because I do everything that's new with an escape plan, just in case, even though she hasn't had any kind of meltdowns or anything. Sorry, we live really close to a small airport. So the screen color changed and she got out of her seat and she went to the side of the seats in the, in the aisle and she had her ears covered like this and she's stimming and she's looking at the ceiling and I get her back to her seat and just as I get her back to her seat it changes again and now it's just, it's a rainbow. And I don't mean it's just like a picture of rainbow, I mean the whole ceiling is striped in rainbow colors. How exciting is that? So she's not like overwhelmed, exciting, stimming really, really, really loud like she would at home or trying to watch TV or something. Um, but she's making noise and it's quiet in there so everyone can hear her. I'm sure there's people looking at us. Um, I didn't feel like she was doing anything that was um, severely disruptive. The presentation hadn't started yet. The speaker was just saying things like, you know, turn your cell phones off and stuff like that. And um, I didn't get her, just, I was trying to navigate her back to her seat and I had her on my lap and I was just trying to kind of wiggle my knee and like give her a little sensory input. And I figured once the show started, um, and which would probably be very loud as well, um, once the show started, it would probably be fine. And about that time, the young man that was giving the presentation walked over to our side of the theater and took a step forward and looked straight at us and said <laughs> if you have a child that's afraid of the dark I suggest that you leave now because once I start the show the lighting is gonna go down and there won't be anything that I can do for her so the doors are right there and you know just just saying not that you're not welcome but <laughs> I suggest that you leave so um, I can't say I have ever been called out quite like that. I mean, I'm used to people looking and things like that, but I've never had anyone like blatantly suggest that I leave from a place. And it was very intimidating. That's the best word I could say. I wasn't angry. I wasn't even upset really at that point. I was just really intimidated and I kind of had that fight or flight response. And I was just like, okay, let's go. And, and Matt didn't want to leave. And when we got out, you walk out the doors and there's just a dark hallway that you go down, which by the way, if my daughter was afraid of the dark, we never would have gotten in there, believe me. <laughs> um, and he's like, well, what, why don't we just wait for the show to start and then just go back in? And I was just like, no, no, no. You know, I was, I was intimidated by it. And I, I just, I just didn't want to go there. So <laughs> we left. And I kind of tried to blow it off. And then I thought, you know, there must be a day that she's allowed to come, that it's okay for, for her to come with her vocal stims. Maybe they have a sensory day or special needs day or, or something. It'll probably be on a weekend, so I can't go, but there has to be something, right? So I called the next day and there wasn't. And I kind of didn't even know what to say. I, I'm like, so you're telling me there isn't any day that I can bring her that she's welcome to come to the science center? And they said, well, she can come any day. And I said, well, obviously she, she can't come any day because we were asked to leave. And they're just like, oh, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't really know what, what happened. Um, and at that point, I just broke down into tears. <laughs> which wasn't my plan. I don't usually do that, but it was just so over. I've never, I've never ever thought that, that she would not, absolutely not be welcome somewhere at all, ever. And that's what they were telling me. 
and I started crying and then she's like oh let me transfer you to somebody and so she transferred me to somebody and then that person I could hardly talk when they <laughs> transferred me to them and they're like oh well let me transfer you to, to somebody else so they transferred me to a manager and then that manager's like oh well let me talk to that person's boss and then we'll get back to you on Monday so they got back to me and they were very apologetic. They had talked to the young man that did the presentation. He apparently, they said he didn't realize the situation. I find it hard to believe that someone can't tell the difference between someone with uh, severe autism and a, and a typical child that's afraid of the dark, but you know, who knows. Um, he was very apologetic and um, I didn't get to speak with him personally, but that's what she said. And um, she just apologized up and down and they invited us back for, you know, they said, just let us know when and, and we could come back and they would accommodate us in some way. She said that they are going to team up with a website that I hadn't heard of before called PAL Experiences. It's palexperiences.com. And on that website, it's pretty neat. Um, unfortunately, there's only six businesses on there, six um, places, venues, businesses. But it goes on there and you can see like a video of where you're going so you can show your kids where you're going, which is cool. And it tells you like noise level and, and things like that. But um, unfortunately, it didn't really solve my problem. Um, I said, you know, are you gonna provide any training for your staff? And she's like, oh, and she's like, yeah. Um, that's step two. <laughs> so keep my fingers crossed. I hope that there is a step two someday so that someone else doesn't have to be put in that position. Um, so yeah, that's what happened. So I don't know if we're gonna go back again or not. Um, I'm still not feeling super comfortable about it. But, uh, probably give it some time and maybe we'll try again, I don't know.